Welcome to video three, where we will discuss HACCP principle number two, which is to identify critical control points. Critical control points are a step at which control can be applied and a food safety hazard can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to acceptable levels. This is based on the hazard analysis. Through the hazard analysis, we identify significant hazards, and those hazards are those that will cause injury or illness if we don't effectively control them. So we need to identify critical control points where we can control for those hazards. These critical control points need to be carefully developed and documented. If we have too few of them, we may miss the significant hazards. But if we have too many, this can be very burdensome and we're actually trying to control non-food safety issues. An example of critical control points would be thermal processing or cooking, chilling of a cooked food product, the product formulation control, or testing the product for metal contaminants. When identifying critical control points, we need to keep in mind those factors that affect bacterial growth, as biological hazards are those that we are most concerned with in food products. We want to create an environment that is unfavorable for bacterial growth. So if we know the bacteria need certain things in order to grow, we can prevent their growth. Bacteria need food or nutrients in order to grow, so if we can limit the nutrients within the food product itself, we can limit the bacterial growth. In addition, bacteria need a certain pH range. This is oftentimes the neutral pH range, so if we can create products that fall out of the neutral pH zone, we're creating an unfavorable pH environment for bacteria. Bacteria also need a certain amount of time in order to grow and double in size. Within that time range, they also need an appropriate temperature. So if they have a favorable temperature range and a certain amount of time, they will grow very rapidly. Bacteria also require a certain amount of oxygen as well as a certain amount of moisture. If we can limit the amount of oxygen as well as the amount of moisture in a food product, we are putting up another hurdle or a way to prevent bacterial growth within the food product. These critical control points help to control product safety. Ex specific examples of critical control points would be, since we know the bacteria require a certain amount of time at a certain temperature in order to grow and thrive, we can utilize a specified heat process at a given time and temperature that is designed to destroy a specific microbiological pathogen, such as E. coli or salmonella. We also know that there's a certain temperature range that we need to, and a certain amount of time that we need to chill a product down to in order to prevent hazardous microorganisms from multiplying. So refrigerating a pre-cooked food item is a way to prevent microorganisms from multiplying. Critical control point control product safety. Another example would be, since we know the bacteria require a certain pH range in order to grow and thrive, we can adjust the pH of a food product by adding certain ingredients or fermenting the product and lowering the pH. This creates an unfavorable environment for the bacteria and prevents them from growing.